Hey guys, welcome back to Flat Creek Outdoors. I'm Phil, and today it is the day before the remnants of Hurricane Ida come through, and we're gonna have a whole bunch of rain here. So I wanted to get uh, some seed down for a cover crop. It's also gonna be a food plot for hunting season, but it's mostly a cover crop for us, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. But I got the orange tractor here with a spreader on the back, and the area we're working in today is just behind our shed. So if you've seen some of our other videos and some of our layouts here, there's the one of the wood piles, there's the shed, and we are literally right behind it. We've got about an acre and a quarter back here. And I've got my son kind of bush hogging this field right now. And we're gonna come through with a plow in a second, I'll show you that. But I just wanted to get some of the vegetation on this field chopped up, and I didn't feel like hooking the bush hog up to one of the other tractors because we're gonna be using a couple different implements today, and every time we hook and unhook, a different implement that's just a bunch of time. So I could throw him on the mower while I get some of this other equipment ready and while I talk to you guys. And then I've got the other tractor down here. Let's go take a look at it. So the last time I got this tractor out, I had to charge its battery from my truck. I checked the water, or checked the coolant. There wasn't anything visible in the radiator. So I've got it down here where I've got a little stockpile of water. We don't have any fresh water source here on the farm, so I actually bring water by the barrels full from the house. And I had that there and I was able to top off the radiator. It actually didn't need that much, which makes me feel pretty good. But today I learned this hood actually has a catch right there. Isn't that great? So now, usually I try to find some tool and I like prop it up or I've tied it up before. I, in four years, well not four years, three years of having this property and having this tractor. I never saw that until today. There is the old plow that uh, we picked this up earlier in the season. It was like 175 bucks. It's a homemade thing that looks like it was it was an old, uh, I don't know, different type of attachment like for an old 8N tractor or something. Somebody welded this drawbar to it so it can mount to a three-point, um, to a regular three-point hitch. And anyway, it's two bottom plow. This 50 horsepower tractor, as long as it has traction, has no trouble pulling this plow. And the other tractor, my Kubota, struggles a bit at times just because it's not nearly as heavy. So uh, I'm gonna do the plowing with this tractor and then I'm gonna do the spreading and the tilling with the other tractor. So the short version of what we're trying to do here today is the soil over there behind the shed is not great. It is, I'm sure, very compacted, though I haven't dug any test pits or anything but the rest of our property is previous owners had cattle out here they had machinery out here and best i can tell they didn't really do anything to improve the quality of the soil for many 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 years and that leaves us with a challenge when we're trying to grow things and we just decided within the last week or two that we are going to move our flower patch over there behind the shed where it will be much more accessible to our customers when they come into our property currently our flower patch is way over there so people have to walk in they have to enter our property from up by the shed they have to walk down this gravel road across the pond across the tree field and all the way over there and on a 95 degree august day that's a bit much to ask so we decided we're going to move it and improve the soil over there. And anyway, long term, that's probably better for us anyway because where the, where the flower patch currently is, is going to end up being all Christmas trees eventually in the next few years. So uh, anyway, we're putting in the work now before Ida comes to get the seed down, to get this plowed over. And um, hopefully by springtime, it's gonna be a lot better shape than it is today. So let's get to work.
Well, that's about 40 minutes of plowing there. We just measured it off with a big measure tape. So I've got 180 feet down this row. Now this field's kind of triangle shaped. So as we go down the hill here, each of the rows end up getting shorter. So it goes down to about 135 feet at the far end where I plowed it and we're about 70 feet from the top here down there. So uh, anyway, I'll have to calculate later how much that is, but I think it's about the same size as the flower patch that we had this year, which was actually uh, 60 feet wide by 180 feet long. So we're going a little bit wider here, a little bit longer on this first row and a little bit shorter over there. Anyway, it'll all work out. And um, I think down on the low side, I'll probably just go ahead and do another two or three passes with just the tiller. And then in the spring, all of this will get plowed over again. Now, I am going to, because the ground is so compacted here and I wanna make sure that we get good drainage and this doesn't just turn into mud, I'm gonna hit the subsoiler in downhill rows here, uh, starting up here where I'm standing. So any water that runs from up here down in this direction, which that's the slope, doesn't just caught up, get caught up in this low spot. It can find the subsoil trench and head on downhill before it gets over there. And anyway, about every 12 to 15 feet or so, I will do a little subsoil trench downhill. We've done this elsewhere on the property and it's worked out pretty well for making sure some of these compacted areas uh, stay well draining. So let me knock that out real quick and then we'll go hook up the tiller. There's the subsoiler. I didn't have the camera on just a minute ago, but I subsoiled uh, one row here just outside of my plowed area. And then I started to do another one over here, but the height of the plowed soil is preventing the subsoiler from getting down in the compacted ground. And it was just dragging big piles of sod. So I'll revisit this idea after we till all this up and break it up. And then we should be able to get that subsoiler way lower. If not, maybe we'll just end up subsoiling in the spring uh, before we plow this over again and get ready for flower season. about 40 minutes of tilling. Got that all done. So now I can get back to the subsoiler, rip us a couple little drainage channels in here. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's like, from on this side, there is a little bit of a dip. You can see it down there. I don't want water to sit in there. So I want to try to dig some channels that go down to that grassy area down there. Um, and the rest of this, I'm just going to follow the slope and try to get a couple channels straight downhill.
All right, that is finally done with prep. Now I swap back over to the spreader and I've got a couple different seeds down here I'll show you. This first mix here is called a fall wildlife mix and I actually added some other stuff to it too but the standard mix uh, from, from the co-op has rye and peas and oats and clover and a couple other things in it. So uh, it's a good mix by itself. I've added some additional oats and some additional clover to the mix and I'm gonna go ahead and dump this whole thing in there. This is about I don't know, 10, 12 pounds of seed or so, and I've got about a third of an acre here to cover. So this by itself is not quite enough. Uh, so I also have um, some annual ryegrass that I'm just gonna throw in and mix in as well. And this is actually leftover from last year, so I don't know how good the germination is gonna be on this. I thought it's add an extra few pounds of that. That should give us really good coverage on this plot. Crowd out the weeds. Now I'm just gonna reach in here and kind of mix this up by hand. But you can see there's a lot of small seeds in there. Oh, we also added some rape to the mix. So now we've got oats and rye and peas and rape and clover. So a good mix of grasses and leafy stuff and legumes that can fix nitrogen to the soil. And hopefully when we plow this in in the spring, it's gonna do really well for us. I don't know if you can tell, but since I've been working, it's gone from full sun to full cloud. So I know rain is coming this afternoon and I'm getting the seed down, I hope right at the right time. Well, I'll give you a post on how this does here in the next couple weeks. I actually have the bigger patch in the back too that I planted buckwheat in earlier this year. I use pretty much the same seed blend uh, back there. It's a one acre patch. This is about a third of an acre. So uh, I'm gonna do an update video on it uh, in about two weeks. Uh, and I figured I would show in that video how we prepared back there where there was already buckwheat and uh, kind of the same process that we did for planting, but in the same video, I was gonna do an update on how it's doing. So kind of jumping around with the timing on a couple of these videos, but you'll get the idea if you follow along. So look out for that update in about two weeks of how this is doing. Hopefully the germination is looking good. Hopefully everything's able to pop up real quick, suppress weed growth and then it will hopefully continue to flourish into the fall and, and over the winter, the things that can survive over the winter anyway. So if you've got any questions or comments on what we're doing, leave those below. And until next time, hope you have a good one. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.